All right, all. Today we have a Pen Squall 60 LD that we're going to break down and put back together for you. I'll start with this uh, this left side beauty ring. We're just gonna take this off and. Uh, just loop the inside of the ring and put it back on. Now, if you know that these screws are very specific to certain areas. The finely threaded screws, which look like that, go into these posts that are metal, like this, and these, these are the thicker threads, or wider threads. Let's get as close as I can with this. They go into the graphite portion of it, which would be the lower side right here. Let's just pop this off. We're gonna clean the inside of this and then grease it up because salt water can get inside here and obviously corrode inside. Okay, so now we can <clears throat> remove the right side so we can get the spool taken out. Go ahead and remove these screws. These screws up here for the lug are the same as the left side where they're partially threaded. And it's the same as the left side. The screws are different depending on where they're going these screws are going into posts so they're finely threaded screws and this bottom screw hole here is into the graphite so it's a thicker threading on the screw also have to remove these screws on the inside here they're going into graphite so they're thicker uh, threading or wider gap threading as well now we'll remove the tension knob like so then you can remove these clutch washers they sit in a flying saucer shape so concave to concave and we can remove this cam be careful for that o-ring there this pops out now we can remove this ring same deal we're going to grease the inside of this just cleaning as i go on this one and we won't remove this quadrant ring here but to remove that you simply take off remove these screws and lift the plate straight up. Okay, now we can pull this off, like so. And let's start with the left side first. We'll leave the right side for last. To get the spool out, You need to remove these dogs. And to do that, you need to remove these screws. Pull the dogs off of there. 
pull this up and that's how it sits now you can go ahead and remove the spool and I'm going to show you how to break down everything inside here so let's remove these screws so we can get this bracket out so we have more room to work with and to remove these um, lugs what you simply do is remove that screw these kind of slide up they fit inside a, a slot in here as well as a little plug on the bottom there but I will not be taking those off pretty straightforward okay so let's get to this good stuff over here to get this piece out you got to remove these two screws these are Phillips And note the way that thing is sits inside the left side plate. Notice how it sits like that. Let me give you an orientation as to where the dog is compared to where the slot is. It's angled away from it. Just pop that out. And that's that that's all that sits underneath there so now we're going to remove the dog assembly i think you can see that and one thing you have to be careful of here is the spring these are all the same screws just checking it to make sure all the same size screws so they're interchangeable one thing you have to uh, be careful of is when you lift these plates up that spring that holds the clicker in place doesn't go shooting off on you to remove those springs hold down on the spring itself and pry pry it up just like that this way they don't, they don't fly off on you and then there's a spring in here that holds the click tongue let's get this piece out Okay, so to do this click tongue, we have to remove the E-ring that's sitting here. I just pry it off. Like that. And now we got to find it. Where'd you go? It's in there somewhere. We'll find it in a sec. Up with this and put your finger on this portion right here when you push out the knob because that will go flying on you. Okay, now the tension is off. You can just pop this out. I might still go flying. Let's hold on to it. Yeah, it did fly. And here's our E-ring right there. All right, I'm going to get this cleaned up. Now we're going to clean these things up and get them greased again. Okay, so to put this back together, just 
like the fun part. The first thing we'll do is stick this prong back in and the way it sits is, see if I can get this for you. The slant will be going towards the inside of the spool. When you see this up close, it's slanted from this end up to this end. It won't sit like this. That would be incorrect. It has to sit this way. So hopefully you can see that on camera. We got that set back in place. Just drops in like that. Keep your finger over this just in case it wants to go shooting somewhere. We'll just set that in just like that and leave it alone. Next we'll get our, our spool thingamajiggy. This is for the left side of the spool, just keeps it in place. There's no bearing on this side. And we're gonna set that back in place. Again, it sits at an angle, like so, away from the, the click tongue. We'll get our screws in just to lock it down. And now we can put these springs in and the way they sit is like that. They're both the same size, so it doesn't matter where which one goes where? Sit just like that. Okay, so now we can cover them up. We'll grab our screws here and just get these covered back up. And the reason you want to cover these things up before you go any further is because there's a plate that will sit on top of this where the knob, the click knob goes through that will stop it from springing up on you when you try to reinstall it. Plate only sits one way. So if the hole doesn't show up based on the way you put it, just flip it around. But that's the way it'll sit, like that. plate sits is this little arm here is what's going to protect this spring from popping out so to sit just like that And now that spring is protected. So now we can go ahead and get our knob pushed back in. The way to do that is stick it through the hole. And I might have to do it sideways so you may not see me do what I'm 
do everything here. But you're going to push this back and then push the knob through. Let's see if I can do this on camera for you. I'm not sure I can, but I'll try. Let's set that down, find it. Just like that. Hope you guys saw what I did there. Okay, so that's in. We can put our click tongue on, and the click tongue sits this way, where this curved portion, where it's the um, the E ring, will sit, facing up. This groove portion underneath will be facing down. I'm going to grease this up. Then just pop that over there. Like so. Then we'll open these prongs up to get this seated properly inside. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Now to get this E-ring on, I actually start from the top right there, like that, and then I'll angle it down. Stay there. I'll angle it down onto this knob. So the way I do that is I just push it forward. Hopefully it doesn't stay my finger, but it did. Put it under here, hopefully you can see it that way. Push it like that. Come back then angle it down into the groove like so just like that now I'm going to use my finger to try and do this versus that magnetic tip and then I'll push down out <clears throat> I'll push down like this and then I will pop it into the groove like that and it's not fully seated yet so you stick your screwdriver inside here there's a little space right there and that will pop it in place I have to do it this way. You guys won't see it, I don't think, but you should be able to hear it when I pop it in there. Okay, we got it in there. Yep, we're good. And that's that for the left side, and that's how you do the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the clicker. 
So now we can go ahead and put this bracket back on after I clean this up a little bit. Where the bracket sits is this way. Like so. I'll put our two threaded or partially threaded screws back in so we don't lose them. One thing I do want you to be aware of is that the screws on the screws, the partially threaded screws for this, for these lugs on the left side will be shorter than the ones on the right side. Okay, that's done. Let's go ahead and get to the, to the spool. I think you guys kind of know how to remove these lugs. I'm sorry, the uh, rod bracket. So we'll leave that the way it is. And if you don't, by all means, ask me. All right, so the way to remove this is you have to unscrew this, and this is a reverse threaded screw, so it just turns right to remove. Just pull this out. This is where the drag sits. Kind of want to keep it together so you guys could see it. But that's not going to happen. It's fine. Move the spring that sits inside there. And the drag washer. There's a bearing that sits in here. We'll go ahead and get that taken out. Like so. And to remove this side, what's coming out here is the sleeve that sits over the shaft. To remove this side, remove these screws. And I'll get this out of the way so you can actually see what's under here before we reassemble it. Move those screws and under here you'll find this setup like that. So let's go ahead and pop that out and I'll show you how it sits. See if this bearing comes out easier. Good. And I'm just going to clean this spool down a little bit. Okay. So the way this sits is there's this tension spring there. That sits on top of it like that. This bearing sits on top of that, like that, and this. And that all sits on top of this bearing. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and grease the inside of here so we can get this bearing put back in. Get the bearing in, like so. We're gonna get this sleeve just to kind of help us position this assembly here. I'm gonna take my shaft. Uh, let's see if we can get this. I'll do it like this. Nope, I can't. That's fine. I'm gonna rest this tension spring on there. This assembly goes on top of it. And then we can cover it back up. But I'm going to center these things over it so we don't have any issues. And I'm just going to take the shaft and put it in the improper way. Just to get it to fit through there. Make sure we're good. And now we can just stick the... Uh, this over it. 
I'm going to add a light amount of grease to this here. This is for the uh, the clicker. That's good. Just stick that over there like that. Find the holes and get these screws back in place. Then we're good. Okay, I'll pull this out. So now for this side. I'm actually going to stick this through here just to make sure it was good and it is so for this side we need to stick in the shaft this way get the sleeve on there like so I'm going to add some oil to this one Not too much on this. Kind of work that over like that. Drop that in place. Now we're going to take our bearing <coughs> and we can just put that inside. And I'm going to break down the, uh, move that and grease this first. I'm going to break down the, uh, the drag assembly for you. take this bearing get that set over there push it in place make sure it's seated all the way down and now we can take our drag we'll grease this up I'll pop that in place and then I will break this part down for you And this just sits in the grooves. There's four little grooves here that I just set in like that. All right, so to remove, to break this part down, this is the, the ratchet here. We're gonna remove these springs by simply popping them out and up, keeping your hand over it. I'm being careful not to touch the plate that sits on the drag itself. Same thing for this one. Like so. And this comes apart. And that's it. So now we can clean this down. Nothing on there that's good. Clean this up and then we'll re grease it. And if you're wondering or if you get confused as to what part goes where, the fat part, which has the bearing inside of it, I can pull that up for you in a sec, goes down. The part with the star on top 
faces up. That's where the pinion will sit. Let's get this bearing taken out of there just so you can see it. Then we'll grease inside there as well. There's a shim washer that went on the inside of this, like so. Just got to keep track of the pieces that came out. So you know where they go. Okay. Stick that back in there. Just like that. And now we can get our ratchet and everything else added back on there. Add some grease around here. Same for this. We're going to add a little bit of grease in there as well. To this part first this is the ratchet the ratchet will sit this way with the prongs facing that way not this way that would be incorrect get our small ring stick it back on there and let's do the same for the other side after we put this plate on. This plate is going to sit just like this. Making sure that's clean. Then we get our ring on here. Stay there. Like so. Now we'll put our spring on first. That'll sit there. And clean this off again. Next, we'll put this on over it, just like that. Notice how it just sits there like that. Then we can screw it down with this plate. And remember, right loosens it, left tightens it. It's perfect. And that's that for the spool. So all we have left is the right side plate and then we will be done. Just going to remove the main gear. out like this main gear comes off there's a washer here that sits under the main gear like that and we'll pull these bearings out so you can see them as well it's a bearing and also another thrust bearing this can come out 
make sure that you put it back in. And the assembly for this is going to be, oh, let me clean this out first. Cause we're gonna grease inside there. All right, so assembly for this will be this going in first. Just push it straight in. Base, the grooves will be sitting up on the first one, the groove side. The recess side will be facing down on this ball bearing. The groove side on this plate will be facing down like so. Then the bearing sits on top. And that's how that sits. For the main gear, where do we put that? Oh, there it is. We're gonna clean this up and then we're gonna re-grease this. Set that to the side. Cause we're gonna show you how to break down the rest of it. I'm gonna clean this pinion off and then we'll get to the handle and the shaft there. Okay, so to get this shaft out, we're gonna remove this nut. So remove the cover first, or the casing first. Pop that off, then we'll take this nut, and it shouldn't be very tight. Remove that. This pops right out, breaks down just like this. There's a thicker washer that sits on the bottom, excuse me, on the bottom here. There's a thinner washer that goes on top, which is essentially underneath the, sorry, on the, underneath the main gear. But don't forget the thicker washer goes on the bottom of this. Add some grease to this. Not too much. Just a light coat. Okay. Now we can put this back together. On with the washer, on with the cap. On with the nut. And this doesn't get super tightened. All you're basically trying to do is get it lined up with the hole. Screw that in place. And we're good to go with that. All right, so our next step would be to our next step would be to put the uh, this pool in and then put our dogs back in place. So let's go ahead and get that done. When you sit this in there, 
Make sure you find the groove that it's supposed to sit in. So it can drop in place. And now we can put our dog in. We're going to clean this up a little bit and then add some more grease to it. And the way it sits is just like so. Make sure your dogs are in position. It'll sit just like that. So I'm going to lift this up. Get it closer so you can see it. Get our teeth in place on that one. Find our groove again. And then we can manually get this other dog set like so and then lock this in place. This right one has a tendency to come out. Um, so when we're putting this right side plate back on, uh, we have to make sure that it stays in place for it to set properly. Okay, so that's that for that. Let's go ahead and get our handle back through here. We'll add our main gear. First, we put the washer on. On with the main gear. It is keyed. And then we'll add our screw. So now we'll get our pinion. And we're going to rest that in this groove right here and it has to fit inside the star so it has to sit recessed make sure everything's lined up make sure the dogs are still on put this down in position now uh, we popped that one out it's not too bad let's go ahead and get this set back in place so give me one second just sits in there like that and the ball sits on top so it's just a pressure thing let's get that back over there it'll sit like that like so okay now again don't forget that if you put this on and you feel like it's not sitting properly double check the dogs to make sure they're still in place that will be the main culprit so gently get that put on there and it's set properly so we know everything is good I'm gonna lock this down with the bottom screw and the two inside screws bottom screw is going into graphite so it is the wide threading screw or wide threaded screw oh, let's get our bracket on first get that on so the wide threaded screw going into the bottom tighten things in graphite I'm still holding it together so it doesn't slip out of place get our two 
screws for the back. Okay. Let me go ahead and get these two screws in here also. Now we can get to the lever portion of this, or the uh, tension. All right, let's get this cleaned out, and then we'll add some new grease to this. Good. Now we're just gonna set this on top, and we're gonna put it close to the free, pool, free spool position. Then just pop it over and it'll be in the free spool position. We're going to get this after we clean it up and re-greased the cam and just stick it in place. Let's re-grease this. When putting this cam in, you want to make sure these grooves are set at the lowest point. Corresponding to the grooves that are inside that knob there. Make sure it's sitting perpendicular or flat. Drop that in place. Turn it until it sets in place, which it just did. Drop the clutch washers in. Again, you're doing a saucer pattern, concave to concave. It's just like that. This looks fine for grease. We're not gonna add any to it. Just take your knob, screw it on there. And you are essentially done. There's a free spool working good. Tension knob is a little tight. Good. In gear. Add these two screws and we're done with the pen 60 LD. Or the Squall 60 LD, excuse me. Alright guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw. If a lot of it made sense to you or helped you. Please hit the subscribe button. I have a bunch of videos that I'll be putting up. On any reels that I get. So again, hopefully you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And I will see you next time.